And welcome back in Frost Arena, home of the South Dakota Showdown this weekend. Back-to-back -back nights here. Doubleheader, South Dakota and South Dakota State. First time around for the men coming up a little later on this evening. Our coaching comparison brought to you by Dakota Bank. Don Plitzewite, fifth year now as the head coach of the Coyotes. Three Coach of the Year honors in a row for Plitzewite in the Summit League. Aaron Johnston has won a couple of those himself. 21 years now as the head coach and 505 total wins for South Dakota State. Hannah Shervin, Maya Sellen will tip it up. Coyotes in control. And here we go. Shervin will bring Peyton Burkhardt out top. Janaya Uguski into the starting lineup this year as a sophomore for the Coyotes. First miss there by Lamb, a rebound down to Tylee Irwin for the Jackrabbits. Tom, right away you see there, South Dakota State trying to run some sideline break. USD well scouted as they get a hand on it there and knock it out of bounds. Jackrabbits starting five, a couple of South Dakota kids in there with Peyton Burkhardt from Aberdeen, Maya Sellen as well, and a few on the other side for South Dakota when we get to that with Janaya Uguski has mentioned, Chloe Lamb from Oneida. Lindsey Thunick will play it in for the Jacks on their first possession. Here's Sellen, guarded right away by Uguski. Yeah, matchups obviously a huge key in a big game like this, and Uguski, a younger player, just a sophomore, matched up on Sellen. Let's see how she can do. That's her guarding the ball. Coming off the Burkhard screen, Sellen with the first bucket. There's the Coyotes with Shervin, the preseason Summer League Player of the Year. Maddie Kroll is a true freshman into the starting lineup. Rebound for Lindsey Thunick for the Jacks. Tori Nelson running on the left side. I think you're going to see a lot of that. SDSU getting out and running anytime they can get a defensive stop. And a hot start for Sellen as she's got their first four. Sellen at 19 points a game. Summit League leader coming in. The top four in the Summit League in scoring are in this game. Sellen, number one, and then USD's got the next three after that with Corn Gable, Chloe Lamb, and Hannah Shervin. Yeah, how about that in your starting lineup, Tom? All three of those players, 16 points a game or better for USD. Kroll with a three on the way. The Coyotes open up 0 for 3. And a big thing for SCSU, they've controlled all three defensive rebounds. Sellens had the first two buckets. Again, matched up with Uguski. Tylee Irwin comes out top. Corn Gable scrambling for his steal, and it comes away with the shot clock still at 10. Tori Nelson for three. Might have grazed the bottom of the rim. Rebound to Shervin. Now that's just USD showing how disruptive they can be defensively there. And SDSU returning the favor there. Good hands by Tori Nelson. But I think she picked up a foul going for the loose ball. Now, this is a great job by Nelson just being big. And one of the things that South Dakota State's got to do in this game, Tom, is put pressure on the basketball. That will really make USD's job getting the ball into the low post a lot tougher. There is Kroll, the freshman. Shervin, there's the pass you're talking about. They want to... Start right away, getting yeah. the ball in the post to Hannah Shervin. Shervin at six foot two now in her senior season. She was the newcomer of the year in the Summer League a couple of years ago. Defensive player of the year last year. Yeah. She's just quite frankly at a different level than anyone else has in the Summer League in the low post. Kroll got it with the left hand, got it up over Lindsay Thurnett to get USD on the board. Well, Kroll, a freshman. Big game for her, and good to see her knocking in her first shot if you're USD. Burkhardt trying to work in there against Shervin, nothing there. Swing it back to Sellen, and a rebound down to Chloe Lamb. Well, it's important that Peyton Burkhardt work hard in the low post, even if they can't get her the ball. Force Shervin to have to guard defensively. Lamb on a stumble on that spin dribble. Chloe Lamb, though, has played very well here in her USD days against the Jackrabbits on, U on South Coast State's home floor. 
Yeah, her averages are just off the charts. And she had a huge game here last year. I think really a big reason why USD was able to come in here and get a 10-point win. Kick there by Shervin. Coyotes, again, have won 24 Summit League games in a row. And yes, that one of them was here last year. The Coyotes swept South Dakota State in the three games last season. Selling inbounds. Ugaski might have redirected that a little bit. Here's Corn Gable. Lamb. Step out three is good. And five straight for the Coyotes to take the lead. And a little transition of their own. USD not afraid to get out and run as well. Chloe Lamb is the Summit League leader in made threes coming into this game. He's got to continue to move the basketball on this, and they can't let it stick. USD's too good of a defensive team if you do that. Off the dribble, Yuguski took it away, and then Tori Nelson just picked up her second foul. Yeah, that's not what you want to see early on in the game for SDSU. Both of them just hustle plays by Nelson, trying to make the right thing happen there. And Aaron Johnson has to go to his bench and dip into some youth now. Matty Velostian, freshman from Lennox, checks in for South Dakota State. Here's Kroll. Shervin again backing down on Peyton Burkhardt, and they call three seconds on Shervin. Oh, I tell you, watch that battle in the post. It is physical right now. Peyton Burkhardt <laughs> trying to go toe for toe, kind of won the battle that time by just holding her ground and forcing that turnover. Started again with Sullen. Reverse through Burkhard. A little peek from Corn Gable there to get around to Velostian. And Maddie Velostian in Summit League play, Bradley, since the Jacks have gotten into the league play in the six games is over 50% at the three-point line. Yeah, she had a really rough start to the season, but has really gotten a lot of confidence lately. Shervin spun into a double team, muscled it out of there. Velastian with the rebound. Well, I tell you, SDSU is really making life tough early on for Hannah Shervin. Burkhard. Now, those are the shots that Burkhard's going to get against Shervin. Step back, 10 footer. Now, watch this battle in the pole. Shervin and Burkhard <laughs> are going at each other. <laughs> uh, Shervin releases. Up top, rebound down to Tylee Irwin. Uh, SDSU's going to be fine if Shervin wants to take threes. Shervin's made one three on the season. Selling off again, has missed her first two from long range. Nice team's now pretty tired here. We haven't had a stoppage <laughs> in a while. Lamb, little rhythm jumper coming off that screen, and Jack's on the defensive boards again. Six straight defensive boards to start this game for SDSU. That's huge for them. Irwin goes down. Shervin's got the ball, no whistle yet. Waiting for a tie-up, and they finally get one. So we will get a break after five and a half quick minutes with South Dakota State in the early lead, 7-5. Sellen. Sellen leads the Summer League in scoring right now. Shervin leads the league in rebounds per game and blocks. I'm really glad right now they're not forcing us to vote for a player of the year because I could not pick between the two of them. I mean, they're both dominant in their own ways, and, and Sellen's having a terrific year again after missing most of last year. And Hannah Shervin's such a terrific player on both ends of the floor. Those blocks per game are huge. She alters so many more shots as well down there in the low post on the defensive end. Selling with a couple of buckets early for the Jackrabbits. Haley Greer checks in. Callie Tyson and Sydney Stapleton in for South Dakota State. Yeah, this is Maya Sellen and four subs off the bench. Selling drops it off there for Callie Tyson. Uh, speaking of players, too, that missed a lot last year, Callie Tyson won for SDSU back now after... A knee injury, so adding some depth to the post for the Jacks there as Stapleton toes the line. What? 
Natalie Mazurik checks in for USD. Here's Morgan Hansen, freshman from Sioux Falls, Lincoln. It's almost like both teams kind of knew their starters were really gassed. Both coaches really went into the bench here and a lot of reserves on the floor right now. Coyotes with three freshmen out there right now. Kyle Watson is not available again tonight for South Dakota. Freshman from Rapid City Stevens. He's been out now for the last seven ball games with a foot injury. That is Greer, the grad transfer this year for the Jackrabbits. I think what you've seen so far early in this game, both teams have done a great job, A, controlling the defensive glass. There's not been one offensive rebound in this game for either team, and forcing the other team to have to go against their half-court D. The result of that, Tom, neither team has really been able to get a lot of offensive traction here. Anna Shervin sat for about 45 seconds. She's back in for the Coyotes. Trying to go to Tyson. Shervin knocks it away into the hands of Morgan Hansen. Now this terrific defense there by USD on the perimeter and in the low post. Now Tyson forced up on Shervin on the D end. Horn Gable gets it to drop. Well, you want to talk about ultimately maybe what the difference maker's been for USD this year. It's been Liv Horn Gable who averaged a little over four points a game last year and up to 16 this year. Selling travel before she got that drive started. Burkhard and Irwin coming back for the Jacks. A little quick stint out there for Tyson and Sidney Stapleton. Well, good job by both coaches using the media timeout. Give their starters some rest with that. Maybe another minute on game time and then you get them back in the game. Lamb. Quite nice screen there to get Lamb open. Back coming off that screen. She's had a couple clean looks, Lamb. Only has hit one so far. Lamb hit that three. Maddie Veloshkin has hit two threes coming off the Jackrabbit bench. Well, she has not played like a freshman in a big game for her first time here. Warren gave with a bounce. Side of the board there and the shot by Missouri. South Dakota's done a good job in transition so far, not letting you, SDSU get going. Selling got behind Missouri. Found there by Burkhard, and it just rolls off. Two free throws coming up for Selling. Now, here's your strategy if you want to get post touches for SDSU, and that is to draw Hannah Shervin away from the rim, Tom. How do you do that? You got to get Peyton Burkhard out on the perimeter. The Jacks do it that time, and let Selling then work in the post, and that's what got her this trip to the foul line. So yes, just you had to learn the hard way a few times going up against Hannah Shervin in the post that that's a tough road to hoe. And so getting her away from the rim certainly can free that up for the SDSU offensively. Six for Selen. She sits down as Mesa Byam checks in for the first time for the Jackrabbits. Coyotes get their first five back out there. Corden Gable rolls off. Looked like Greer might have got a hand on it. Coyotes will keep it this time. You, that's one of the toughest things to defend is that set right there. They're running Chloe Lamb off some double staggers on the backside. You've got to be aware of what she's doing. And then Corn Gable, a terrific penetrator, has an open lane there. There's Corn Gable again getting into the paint and scoring. She has been quicker than the SDSU defender so far and has been able to get downhill. Big part of the program over the years. This is the 98th game for Liv Corn Gable. Got into the starting lineup this year for the Coyotes. Averaging 16 a game. Top five in the Summer League in scoring right now. Burkhard and Shervin tied up, and they called the foul this time on Burkhard. Oh, there's going to be enough hand-to-hand -hand combat between these two. And if you're Peyton Burkhard, you hate to pick up a foul on the offensive end because you've already got... Your hands full down here on this end where you got to guard Shervin on the D end. She's got to be careful now not to pick up her second.
Jax almost got caught in the switch there. Yuguski puts it on the floor. Back to Corn Gable. Stepping through on Thunic. Corn Gable again got another one hanging on the rim, but it would not go down. Yeah, she's getting into the paint where she's been very effective in this game so far. Haley Greer pulling up. Hyam getting on the boards, getting on the floor. Coyotes come away with it. Yuguski taps it to Maddie Kroll. Shervin got behind Burkhardt this time. And there's the first bucket of the game for Hannah Shervin. And SDSU did not get good ball pressure on that pass. And that let USD just put it right on the spot to Shervin for an easy lay-in. Well, Aaron Johnson's put Maya Sullen on the bench, get her a break here at the end of this first quarter. And SDSU's lost a lot of its mojo on the old offensive end. Another tie-up. This time we'll go over to USD and South Dakota State. You spin dribble against the Coyotes, you might lose the basketball. Right? Well, especially with Liv Corngable out there. She's terrific with her hands. Chloe Lamb as well. And especially Corngable. They kind of just let her use her instincts and go after the basketball sometimes, leaving her defender or the offensive player, excuse me, that she's guarding. Final 12 seconds of the opening quarter. Corner to Yuguski. And they'll give it back with eight seconds to go. High turnovers for both teams in this first quarter. Five for USD, six for SDSU. Again, a big game, a lot of hype, a lot of energy playing a big part of that. But also these two teams terrific defensively and just really being disruptive against each other. Selling a little stutter to get around. Yuguski got to the rim and fouled with 1.6 seconds to go in the quarter. And two shots coming for Selling. This is really simple, but honestly, this might be one of SDSU's best offensive sets is just to spread the floor and let Maya Sellen go to work. It is really difficult for any team to shut her down one-on-one, -on -one, and she got to the rim that time. First foul on Janiah Yuguski. Seven for Selen here in the opening quarter in South Dakota State. In the lead by four at the end of the first, Maddie Velostian, freshman from Lennox with a couple of threes in the opening quarter. South Dakota State by four. Stanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back. Great to have you along this evening and this weekend as the Coyotes and the Jackrabbits go at each other here on consecutive nights at Frost Arena. First time around this year and South Dakota State and Maya Sellen 13-2 overall, 6-0 in the Summer League coming in. South Dakota is 10-3 and 6-0 and as well so far in Summer League play. Well, okay. defense definitely ruled the first quarter, right? And uh, we'll see. Does that loosen up here as the game goes on? We'll have to see. These teams have played very physical and pressure style. Well, Matty Velostian has come in off the bench after Tori Nelson got in foul trouble early. Eight points already for Velostian. Yeah, she is the leading scorer in this game for both teams combined. Comes in only averaging three, so huge lift for SDSU getting her with that kind of offensive production off the bench. Maddie Kroll, the spin. Jack's on the boards again. Sellen had seven in that opening quarter. Burkhardt again, trying to draw Shervin away from the hoop. Three, no good for Thunic. Both these teams really doing a great job controlling the glass on their defensive end. Let's see, can South Dakota get going here offensively, Tom? This is one of the best offensive teams, not only in the Summer League, but in the country. And they are 31% from the field so far. Full board for Shervin, and she is fouled by, I think, Tylee Irwin grabbed her. 
possible. To me, this is certainly an area where USD could take advantage. If they're not shooting it well, they're just 5 of 17 now, they should be getting some old boards. That's a, a huge strength of theirs. They get almost 12 of them a game. And Shervin, of course, the leader in that category. Corn Gable got loose. Liv Corn Gable shooting 43% at the three-point line to lead USD, and she's got seven now. Okay, she's been a great energy spark. She's played the whole game here so far and hasn't shown any wear and tear Corn Gable at all as far as letting up her intensity. Lamb gambling, Jacks scrambling. Burkhard gets loose for three. Peyton Burkhard, that's her third made three of the season, but that is a big one for the that's Jackrabbits. That's huge because it's going to be in Hannah Shervin's mind now that she needs to get out and guard Burkhard. That will only draw her away from the, the paint even more. Burkhard, though, just picked up her second foul. And goes to the bench. Callie Tyson back in for South Dakota State. Oh, remember, Burkhardt picked up one of those on the offensive end. That's why that was such a huge call. And you see the effect of that right away as Tyson comes in, a player who's only played in a couple games this year because of injury. And Shervin just posts her right away and gets an easy one. Assist to Yuguski. Shervin now with four. Nice cut there by Irwin, but couldn't handle the pass. Hey. Um, this is a USD team that takes great care of the ball. Ten turnovers a game, a little bit more than that for Don Plitz, white team. That's fourth best in the country. They've had five already in this one. All those in the first quarter. If they can settle down that part, that'll really help them get more on track offensively. South Dakota, best defensive team in the Summer League, and they have been for years now under Don Plitzoy. Shervin out of a triple team to Maddie Crow for three. The third player now on USC to hit a three-point shot in this game, and Shervin a willing passer. If she's going to draw a double or triple team, she'll definitely kick it out. Irwin got the roll. First bucket for Tyler Irwin. SDSU's getting production in the paint, Tom. Why? Because they're they're posting up some of their wings on mismatches. They've gotten Shervin away from the hoop. Great help there. Sellen coming in, but SDSU doesn't come up with a loose ball. And plenty of time here for the Yotes. Corn Gable made the right stop there. Got it off the lamb. We couldn't get it down, and it's off of the Coyotes and out of bounds. I think they actually have a foul on USD there, too. They get Yugovsky coming over the back here. Boy. If anything, it was Tylee Irwin over the back, not Yugovsky over the back. So the officials may have to get together here. And the ball's coming back yep, down to this is. end of the floor, so. Yeah, they had booked a foul on Yuguski. They'll take that away. She's only got one still. And in the meantime, Irwin picks up her second. So Irwin back out. Sydney Stapleton in. South Dakota ball. Well, we're seeing USD2 getting after some old glass now here in this second quarter. Jack's trying to switch up everything right now. That leaves Shervin inside. No contact there with Sellen, but it's out of bounds off of the Coyotes. Well, this game's being officiated like the Summit League Tournament Championship game was officiated last year, and that is they're letting these players play. I mean, there's physicality in the post. It's been going on all game. The officials have kind of let it go. They're trying to talk to the players and keep the star players on the floor. I like that. That's fine. Let's see if it stays consistent. Haley Greer, three, no good. Coyotes will let it go out of bounds. Yeah, that game ended up 63-58, yeah. and you would expect something similar with the way these teams play defensively. Alex Hempy is going to check in for the first time for South Dakota. 
Yeah, this game's trending that way. There's no question about it. And as much firepower as these teams do have offensively, Tom, they're probably actually better defensively. Um, and, you know, that's why they dominate in some of the plays, because they can lock other teams up, and they're doing it to each other right now. Great show, great help there by SDSU. Great rotation on the backside by Stapleton. Saved by Kelly Tyson. Sellen coming the other way. Sellen's been quiet here in the quarter. She had seven in the opening quarter, still right there. And that's a great job double teaming Sellen by USD. They know who the star player is. They shut her down in transition. Backs in against a couple of defenders. Haley Greer trying to go get it. And this is going to get tied up. And go over to South Dakota. <laughs> Tom, does it look like these two teams had two weeks to prepare for each other? I mean, they know each other so well. Uh, these these coaches have both their teams really ready to play tonight in, in scouting report. Again, both squads had games canceled last weekend, so long layoffs for both of them. They've had plenty of time to think about this double dip that was going to be happening this weekend. Claudia Kunzer comes on, Morgan Hansen back, along with Natalie Mazurik for South Dakota. Chloe Lamb stays out there as the only USD starter right now. Hempy's three no good, but into the hands of Mazurik. Third offensive board for the Coyotes. Hempy from the other side, and it comes away to Lindsey Thunick. And this is a live ball still with Kunzer going down. She touched it last and just did roll oh over my. onto the end line before she made that save. Four forty-two to go in the opening half. Coyotes knocking down some threes. It's a four-point game. Midway through the second quarter, South Dakota State hanging on to a four-point lead. Brad Newt, it's been defense. It's been hustle. It's getting after each other. Look at Claudia Kunzer knocks that away, and then... Oh, so close. They call her for having that right hip just over the end line. And who knows who would have got the basketball after that, but... Yeah, I mean, that's what this rivalry is all about and, and the way that these teams play the game, too, and the way they've been coached. I mean, it's full tilt for 40 minutes. And even though they haven't been lighting up the scoreboard in this game, it's because of how hard they've been playing against each other on the defensive end. And as I mentioned earlier, too, I mean, I think scouting's played a big role in this here, too. When you've got two weeks to prep for an opponent, <laughs> You're going to be ready to lock them down. You're going to know their tendencies. You're going to know matchups and what you want to try to do on that DN. And both teams have executed it well so far. So Shervin back on. Stapleton, good look at a three. Five off the bench for Sydney Stapleton. How about, yeah, how about SSU getting some threes from some bench players? Stapleton, Blaston. Danny Velastian's got eight points already. Five for Stapleton. Here's Lamb who hit that three early. And has not scored since. SDC continuing to push the tempo. And there they go. They get an easy one. That's the fast break basketball that's so important for the Jacks. Mesa Byam with the bucket off the assist from Sellin. And South Dakota State opens up a nine-point lead. Well, this is now a 7-0 run for SDSU over the last three minutes. And, Tom, transition offense won't always pay off. There's sometimes you really run the floor, you really push it, and the defense does a great job getting back. But if you keep doing it over the course of 40 minutes, it will yield you some easy points. And I'll tell you, the way this game's trended, easy points are going to be hard to come by. So if you can get a few like that, that might be the separator here for one of these teams to get a win. Seven straight for the Jackrabbits. South Dakota has not scored for three and a half minutes. Well, Tom, you said South Dakota, again, kind of the leader in the Summit League when it comes to a lot of the defensive categories, but SDSU's right behind them. I mean, this is a 
a Jackrabbit team that's only given up 60 a game. And so right now holding USD to 18 is terrific. But it's not unheard of. This is a, a Jackrabbit team that's been able to lock up some really good teams this year. Look at the swarming double team there as soon as Shervin caught it. Back to Kroll, right back to Shervin though. Shervin, two of seven yep. from the field so far. Yeah, that's the key thing and hasn't really been a force on the offensive glass. Yeah, she gets the block there though. It looked like it was going to be a putback for Byam, but Shervin turns it away. Hansen was on the dribble and then Shervin got tied up with Byam. And that is the fourth foul of the quarter on South Dakota State. South Dakota has not attempted a free throw yet, Bradley. Yeah, that's maybe the most surprising thing here. And South Dakota State's done a great job of defending without fouling and giving USC those chances. And again, another one and done. That's been huge as well. Selling right into Shervin, finds Stapleton again. Big three again for Sydney Stapleton. The Jacks with 16 off the bench between wow. Stapleton and Velasco. Yeah, 10-0 run now. And those two players combined average about four and a half points a game. Stapleton saved it. Selling's on the run going in against Lamb, who shut her off and caused Selling to travel with it before that went in. Terrific hustle here by Chloe Lamb. Costly turnover, but she doesn't give up on the play. Look at her sprint here, Tom, to get the position. And then they said someone traveled there. I don't know. It's a tough call there that goes against the South Dakota State Junior. They're going to get a Tyson maybe inside there. Horn Gable knocked down. It is physical in the paint. <laughs> and this should be two shots for the Coyotes now. 15 foul on South Dakota State. So first free throws of the evening coming here for South Dakota with Corn Gable. And Tom, we were talking earlier again about the just the emergence of Liv Corn Gable this year as a score. Again, she's increased her scoring by almost 11 points a game over what she was last year. A role player that played about 17 minutes, now playing 32, and she's the Energizer Bunny out there right now for USD. Well, she's got nine, and that stops that scoreless streak at just under five minutes for the Coyotes. Ripped off by Chloe Lamb, and she will cruise in and make it a four-point run for South Dakota. Five now for Lamb. Costly turnover at the top of the key. And great play by Lamb, though, to anticipate that pass. Catch and shoot for Selling. Tyson got the old board, and then they get a foul on South Dakota. Lamb gets the foul. That'll be four here in the quarter on the Coyotes. Well, with Peyton Burkhardt, two fouls on the bench right now. SCSU needs Callie Tyson to beat a force inside. And if she can get rebounds like that, that really helps. Almost another steal there for Corn Gable. Shot clock down to five. Selling. Screen from Tyson. Yuguski working over the top, and they get Tyson with the foul. That's on Maya Sellen too, because she's got to wait just a hair longer before she goes off that screen. Let Tyson get up there and get set. But Tyson picks up her second now. South Dakota State has four players, Tom, with two fouls, and three of them are starters in Nelson, Burkhardt, and Irwin. Warren Gable for Shervin. Yuguski with the rebound. Janai Yuguski has not scored yet, but she is off defensively on the boards. Everything else for the Coyotes. Corn Gable got it again. There's Yuguski again. We're starting to see USD flex their muscle on the old glass. Would not go for Lamb and three shots, but nothing for USD. Lamb again just 
textbook defensively to shut off that drive by Stapleton, who gets loose on the other side, though, and Sidney Stapleton, wow. three threes off the Jackrabbit bench and the lead back to 11. Tom, this is what Aaron Johnson was hoping Sidney Stapleton would be for him this year, a dynamic score off the bench. She struggled shooting it most of the year. Only came in averaging a little over a point a game, but she's been terrific tonight. Lamb, step in. Tapped out by Shervin into the hands of Kroll. At least Korn gave a wide open. Oh my. And Greer's got it, and this is gonna go the other way, and a foul on Shervin. And that is just her first, and just the second of the quarter here on South Dakota. Well, the total difference in this game is the three-point line. I mean, USD has had great looks. That possession case in point time, but they're two for ten. And then you flip it the other way, and the Jacks are six of twelve. And getting those threes from unlikely sources. We mentioned Sidney Stapleton, three for three. Maddie Velotson's two for two. Those two players alone torching right now USD from the from the arc. Shot clock off, gonna get in that dangerous situation, Brad, where you're trying to run off 25 seconds. Yeah, turnover makes, could really compound that if you can't handle the ball. Coyotes zoning it up, the Lamb took it away, ball still loose, no whistle, Corn Gable is gonna get a layup out of it. And that'll be the final bucket of the first half. in the opening half for Liv Corn Gable to lead South Dakota. Jack Rabbits on the strength of that three-point shooting off the bench. With a nine-point lead at the half. 33-24 South Dakota State. When we come back, we will check in with Macy Miller. Second half in the South Dakota showdown coming up when we come back. South Dakota State back in the national AP rankings this week at number 23 in women's basketball in Division I. South Dakota's been there as well. Coyotes receiving some votes again this week. Both teams 6-0 so far in Summit League play. And SDSU will have the basketball to start the second half. Tori Nelson back in there. Nelson picked up that second foul about four minutes into the game. Sat the entire first half after that. A number of jacks with two fouls in that opening half. Selen, again, checked by Janiyo Yuguski. Out to Tylee Irwin, and that is seven threes already for the Jack Rabbits. A terrific job by Irwin there, just keeping the floor spaced, and South Dakota State's already hit more threes in this game than what their average has been, which has been six per game this year. Shervin, out to Yuguski. Up high, Jax. Cleaned it off again. Coyotes did have seven offensive boards in that opening half. And here's the thing, Tom. USD only scored five points yes. off of them. They got points on those first couple. They got but none on the last five old boards. And that's really the thing that matters is do you turn those offensive boards into points? Peyton Burkhardt did step out, hit a three in that opening half. Shot clock to four here for Sellen going in against Yuguski. And there is a foul with the shot clock winding down and arm bar they call on Janina Yuguski. Yeah, Yuguski's doing about everything he can there. That's that's just a tough guard. Sellen's terrific off the bounce like that. Irwin slipping through, had it knocked away. Yuguski with another board. Horn Gable attacking like she's done this entire game. Blocked from behind by Tylee Irwin. Here's Sellen, seven in that opening quarter for Sellen, did not score after that. Look it again to Irwin. Look at Matty Kroll get a hand on that pass and recover defensively. Now USC's been terrific in this game doing that, being disruptive, getting deflections. Jack's inside out, Burkhardt, nice delivery there to Irwin. Sellen going after it, got tied up by Yuguski before she danced out of bounds there. It goes over to USD. South 
Minnesota's got to start, find a way to get on track here offensively. I mean, they're only shooting 28% in the game, and you look at efficiency numbers. This is a USD team, Tom, that's one of the best efficient offenses in the country, and they were nowhere near that in the first half. Would not go for Kroll. Burkhardt going to try to go at Sherman this time. Defense collapses. Corn get, or excuse me, Chloe Lamb got a piece of that shot. Sherman and Lamb, four for 19 in that first half. As Corn Gable drives that time. Stop and go and got to the rim, and that is three or four or five shots for Corn Gable that have been on the rim and just rolled off, but she gets to the free throw line. And South Dakota, they, they've got to find a way to get Lamb and Shervin going here offensively. Get them in some rhythm, get some post touches for Shervin. Lamb had some good looks from three in that first half, didn't get him to fall. And Horn Gable's been doing her part. And we mentioned Corn Gable, Lamb, Shervin. Those are the two, three, and four ranked scores in the Summit League coming into this game. So USD certainly depends on those three to get almost all of their points. They don't rely a lot on their bench or their role players. Yeah, they get 50 a game out of Corn Gable, Lamb, and Shervin. And so right now, when you look at those three, I mean, they don't even have 20 yet. Burkhard, one bounce. Fouled by Shervin. That is two on Hannah Shervin. Now, generally, Hannah Shervin does a really good job of playing physical basketball on both ends of the floor and not getting in a lot of foul trouble. And case in point here tonight, again, she's played 21 minutes in this game, and that's just her second foul in a game that's had a lot of physicality on both ends. Five for Peyton Burkhard. Lead to 13 for the Jackrabbits. We were wondering about Shervin's minutes tonight, maybe, Brad. Average about 25 a game. Will she get more than that tonight? Yeah, she's already up to 23, so I think the answer is yes. And you'd expect that in a rivalry game. Picked off by Irwin. Here's Velashkin. And Yuguski with her third foul. Yeah, Yuguski's just got to be a little smarter there. She did a good job winning the position. She had selling off the block. Don't reach around and foul there. Yuguski out, Natalie Missouri, one of those kind of freshmen, checks in. Jacks right to Burkhardt, a great move, couldn't finish. Lindsay Thunick with the rebound. Thunick just using her quickness there to corral that. Sherman and Burkhardt got tangled up, and Burkhardt couldn't get her hand up to catch the lob. South Dakota State piling up some turnovers now with 13. Yeah, right about at their season average with a ton of game left to play. And credit USD because they've been terrific at forcing those. All the way by Corn Gable. Shervin got the tap on it and down to Missouri. And the Coyotes back to the free throw line. And that's the first foul on uh, Maya Sellen. Now this is the effect that Shervin can have on the Ogilash. She's got four offensive rebounds now. And you know, really, that was one of the separators when these two teams tangled in the Summit League tournament last year. Shervin had five offensive boards. USD had 16 of them as a team. Another game where the USD Coyotes really struggled shooting the ball, but still found a way to win in Sioux Falls last March. And that might kind of need to be their recipe here today because they've had a really hard time getting anything going. Just shooting 26% USD is in this game. Missouri gets them both. Shervin will get a break as Morgan Hansen checks in. Looks trapping zone. Hey, it takes Shervin out and it does lend itself to be able to maybe do a little bit different things defensively for Don Putzel White. She goes zone this time. Jax could not penetrate. 
Burkhardt, offensive rebound and one. And that's every coach's worry when you do go to a zone defense, especially one where you haven't played it a lot in a game, is rebounding. South Dakota State hasn't really been crashing the offensive glass hard in this one. More concerned with defensive transition. And they get one there. And Sherbin's stay on the bench was not a long one. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the double whammy. You stick out the best rebounder in the yep. league and go to the zone and works out for South Dakota State. Burkhard with seven at the moment. <laughs> Chloe Lamb, can she get going here? Five in the opening half for Lamb. A tough shot there against one of the best perimeter defenders, especially on ball defenders in the Summit League, and Tyler Irwin, who's got great length. Good screen there by Irwin to get herself open. Jacks with six of 12 at the free, three point line in an opening half, seven of 17 now. Yeah, just one of five in this third quarter. Shervin just inside the three-point line. Long two gets hurt at six points on the night. Well, there's the key thing you just said. Just six points on the night. She has not been able to get anything going with any consistency in the low post. And credit Peyton Burkhardt and the SSU defense for that. No Maya Sellen right now for the Jacks. So can they get some points without their best player on the floor? Shervin again going to step out. Well, Hannah Shervin shoots 57% from the field, but SCSU knows she's probably not going to shoot 57% taking those shots, so they're okay with it. Haley Greer just kind of got out of control there, missed that. Maddie Crow coming the other way for the Coyotes to get the lead down to single digits now. A bad shot on the offensive end for SDSU leads to that transition for USD. Jackson led by 13, up by nine midway through the third. Welcome back. High school sports, college football, college basketball. It's here and more on Midcoast Sports Plus. Our new streaming, uh, streaming app gives you access to live and recorded games as well as original shows. You can get it today at midcosn.com slash streaming. Streaming, he said. Brad. Streaming. And so streaming. you can be at the game in person, yes. stream it on your phone, watch. You know, there's a little lag, so it's great. So you can watch anything that you want to see a replay of. It's perfect. And uh, if you haven't gotten that yet, you've got to sign up. It's it's the best way to be able to watch Midco Sports on the go, for sure. Locked in here in Brookings this weekend for the South Dakota Showdown. Men's game coming up later tonight. They'll do it all again tomorrow as well. And count it for Selen, who created a little contact there, got it to go. And a free throw. We get another quick timeout here with... 4.16 to go, selling up to nine on the night. Welcome back to tonight's injury report brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. South Dakota has been without Monica Arns all this season, a huge part of that 30 and two team last year for the Coyotes. Yeah, she was almost a double-figure score for them, but even more importantly, just a real efficient score and set the tone with her physicality on the defensive end. And uh, unfortunately now not able to play this year for USD, and they have certainly have missed her and her leadership too. Another senior would be in this lineup. So Selen finishes off the three-point play. She's got 10 points now to go six assists. And the lead back to a dozen. Crow in the corner. Corn Gable, who's got a 12 right now to lead the Coyotes. SDSU continues to front inside. Anytime Shervin tries to get post position, and Selen that time picking up the offensive foul. 
Warren Gable's been aggressive driving the entire game. Selling did a nice job on the switch there, moving her feet. Might have sold that a little bit. Warren Gable knew she was a little aggressive. Corey Nelson dropping it off for Tyson. And the rebound down to Kroll. Oh, I still just can't believe how much USD has struggled in this game offensively. And a lot of it's because they haven't been able to get Shervin going inside. And Chloe Lamb from the three-point line. Shervin dumped down to Corn Gable, who got just a little step on Haley Greer. First on Greer. I mean, Hannah Shervin in this game, 3 for 10 from the field. This is a player that shoots nearly 60%. And then Chloe Lamb just 2 for 12. Another player that's very efficient in her shooting. Shervin and Burkhardt really battling. Dax again switching pretty much everything. You Gusky. Travel to give it back. Tell you they're switching on the perimeter like you mentioned and they're doing a great job taking away vision with ball pressure and high hands there's been times that sherman's been open inside but usd can't see her usd gonna go back to the trapping zone good look again for tylee irwin Second three of the night for Irwin, and South Dakota State has hit eight of them now tonight. Eight of 18, 45% from the arc. That's going to win you a lot of basketball games. Biggest lead of the ball game for SDSU now. Corn Gable somehow got that through to Uguski. Shot clock did not reset. Off the side of the board. Got it to Kroll. Shervin O'Board. Trying to go right back up with it. And a second time in, in for Shervin. Well, Hannah Shervin finally able to get some stuff going, not only on the offensive glass. I mean, she's had 5-0 boards in this game, but finally gets some points off of it. Couple on that possession there. And she's got 12 rebounds now in this game. Eight points, 12 boards for Shervin. South Dakota State led by nine at halftime. On this end, SDSU's doing a nice job moving the ball, getting people different touches. Here they're giving Selling some room to work. Just enough of a bump by Corn Gable to get the foul there. That's three on Corn Gable now. Shooting two, number 44, Miles Sullen. Well, to put Sullen at the line is USD now over the limit in this quarter. Well, Tommy, mean, really, you look at the star players in this game, and they've all kind of struggled. And I think a lot of that's just because the other teams are so intent on stopping them. Even Sullen's not having a terrific game by her standards. Boy, the physicality in this game. And Shervin and Sellen got tangled up big time on that end. And Sellen on the floor. Boy, I don't know who they called the foul on, but to me, Shervin, from what we could see from that angle, looked like she was the one that displaced. You know, the SDSU bench was up, wants him to take a look at it. The officials are going to go look at the replay. You know, certainly as a defender, you have the right to be in a position and the offensive player can't run through you now. We they did, didn't get a great look at the whole play here. Yeah, they did call the foul on Sellen, by the way. You know, and, and without seeing what happened before that, we don't know was Sellen established in a defensive position where she could, you know, be there and had a right to be there, or was she moving as Shervin was moving? And, Really, the things that the officials can look at here 
is just, you know, was there any flagrant foul or anything like that, excessive contact. Yeah, the foul on Sullen is not going to change, and most likely nothing added to that. Men's matchup coming up at 7.30 tonight. Pre-game at 7.15 as the Jackrabbits and the Coyotes go at it for the second time this season. They are both unbeaten in Summer League play so far. USD is the Summer League leader on the men's side at 8-0. South Coast State's only played four league games with 4-0. And, of course, the Coyotes beat the Jackrabbits at the Pentagon in Sioux Falls back in December. And they go at it again later tonight. That yeah, should be another terrific matchup here. And how awesome is that? I mean, we got doubleheader tonight. You know, we already got USD, SDSU, great rivalry. But yes, all four teams come into this game here tonight undefeated in Summit League play, tied for the Summit League lead with win percentage. And the officials are taking a long look at this, Tom, which means they may think that there is at least some excessive contact. Did Shervin get her arms or her elbows up near the face or at least above the shoulders of Maya Sellen, and if so, they could whistle a flagrant foul then at that point on Shervin, potentially. We'll see. All three officials have looked at it. And yeah, the initial call is a foul on Maya Sellen, which would be her second. And we have I don't know. We've learned that time of review is, is hard to gauge. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, we're not near the floor, so all we can go on is kind of what you're seeing here, too, as far as uh, coach reaction and what they're trying to tell these two benches right now. The discussion with USD was short, which makes me think they're not calling anything on them. And the, the situation, Aaron Johnson's getting a longer explanation. He wants another foul call, but I don't think it's probably going to happen, but we'll see. Now, this is where I have a problem with just the flow of the game here. Okay, we've talked to the benches. This needs to be done, and we need to get back to playing basketball. I mean, this isn't a court session right now. Yeah, let's I'm, play the button. Let's play one, the game here. <laughs> one official's ready. One is at the book making three, uh, making sure that is correct. And one is still having a conversation with Aaron Johnston. And the crowd's going to boo a little bit, but it's going to be just a foul on Sellin. And it's going to be two free throws for Hannah Shervin. Kelly Tyson checks in for Burkhardt. Well, regardless, I think the next 207 here is huge for USD. They've got to chip into this lead if they're going to have any chance in the fourth quarter. They can't go into the fourth quarter down 15. The way this game's being officiated, the physicality, and the way SDC's playing defensively. And not the way you want to start out there with Shervin unable to connect on either free throw. A little scrap underneath there between Tori Nelson and Claudia Kunzer. And Kunzer gets the foul, and both teams are over the limit here yeah. in the quarter, so free throws coming for Nelson. And this is one thing that will drive these coaches crazy is if the whistles start getting tight now later in the game because the officials have let the players play with some physicality most of the game. And now in this third quarter, again, we've seen... 13 fouls total called. Boy, well, yes, he's done just a great job of, of making sure Shervin's catches are tough. They got it to her that time, though. Right back out to Maddie Kroll. Corn Gable for three. My goodness, USC's had great looks, Tom. They are 2 for 12, though, in this game, and that's why they're down 16. Nelson tripped up again inside, and this will 
will be on Corn Gable. And that is four on Corn Gable. Boy, if there's one player that USD can't afford to lose in this game, it's Corn Gable. She's really been about the only person who's been able to get anything going offensively. She's their only double figure score. And there have been nine fouls whistled on USD in this quarter now. And foul trouble becoming a, now a huge issue for the Coyotes. Ten free throws in the quarter here for South Dakota State. And now the officials are calling a foul again down here. On the re they were going, well, there wasn't a rebound because the, the free throw by Nelson yeah. went in, but Maya Sellen is back at the line. And, and Don Plitzelwhite's going to let these officials have an earful, and I maybe kind of don't blame her. The, the way this game's being officiated has changed significantly here in this third quarter, and her team is not getting the best of it. The foul was on Shervin, and that is her third. Yes, you got Shervin with three, Yagovsky with three, and Corn Gable with four, and they called Shervin for just displacing Selen there with her arm. Okay, maybe that's a foul, but did it really affect the game? And that's what you got to ask yourself as an official there. And again, as physical as this game's been, And this is really a, a great opportunity if you're SDSU to, to put the hammer down here. I mean, you've got a chance here to go up 20. And the clock becoming your ally here as the third quarter winds down. Selling up to 14 now. And again, South Coast State shot 12 free throws here in this third quarter. There's that foul trouble we mentioned as a result of it, Tom. Kroll trying to drop it off for Shervin, and it's off the Coyotes. Well, USD's had some things go against them, but they still haven't done themselves any favors, though, in this third quarter. Turn it over too much and just have had opportunities to make baskets, but haven't been able to get shots to fall. Yeah, just 27% shooting for USD. And again, here's another whistle that people are throwing their hands up in the air about this one. That's on Missouri, and a little bit of contact on Selen, but sends her back to the line. Well, Don Plitzelwhite knows she's going to have this officiating crew tomorrow night. She's, she's, I think, trying to just keep herself calm right now. Uh, she has a lot of reason in my mind to be frustrated with how this game's being called now in the third quarter. But credit SDSU, Tom. They, they've taken advantage. They're 11 of 14 from the line third quarter. That's what you got to do when, you, when you're there. You, you make them, and they've extended the lead because of it. Jacks have gone from up nine to up 21 here as we close out the third. Some heavy contact at the other end. Ends up in the hands of Morgan Hansen. That won't go down. Shooting woes continue for the Coyotes. A great job, though. SDSU's contested shots pretty well in this game. And the most important part, Tom, is SDSU's controlled the glass. They just haven't let USD capitalize on offensive boards when they've had a chance to get them. Nelson. Didn't get it, Kelly Tyson did, and got tied up there by Hanson. And more free throws for South Dakota State. Well, and USD's starting to play with a little bit of frustration, and understandably so when you're not scoring like you're used to, just nine points in this quarter. And right now it's an 8-0 run for SDSU here. I mentioned, Tom, at the 2.07 mark that I think the next two minutes are really important for USD, and the game has totally swung against them here. Twenty-one to nine so far in the third quarter. South Dakota State has outscored the Coyotes. Macy Giebert just checked in for USD. Chloe Lamb, and that has been the story tonight for Lamb shooting the ball. Would not drop, and we go to the fourth with the Jackrabbits up by 21.
fourth quarter here between the Coyotes and the Jackrabbits. And you talk about dominance in the Summit League in the last dozen to 13 years. And between South Dakota and South Dakota State, nine of the last 13 coaches of the year. That's Aaron Johnston, that's Don Klitzewite, that's going back to Amy Williams at USD. 12 of the last 13 tournament most valuable players. Kristen Roder, Macy Miller, Nicole Seacamp, Hannah Shervin, the Jacks and the Coyotes have been a lead in the Summit League. Definitely in the last decade. 54-33 to start the fourth quarter. I don't think either one of us, Tom, saw this coming between these two teams here tonight. And SCSU continues to really just play well offensively in this game, too. They've shared it well. They've been aggressive in it. And it hasn't just been Maya Sellen doing all of it. I mean, she's got 15, but they've had great contributions. They've got 21 bench points tonight. And that time, Irwin knocking one in. Wow. Chloe Lamb wow. had that same shot at the end of the quarter. Just, Would not drop, yeah. and she is one of six from three-point land and one of the best shooters in the Summit League. Now these teams, of course, are playing again tomorrow night. And for Chloe Lamb, she could come out tomorrow night and hit five or six of them <laughs> easily. She's had great looks, just one of those rough nights shooting the ball. Burkhardt, couple of jabs, couple of moves, could not get around Shervin, who blocked it and got the rebound. That's why she's the defensive player of the year in the Summit League last year, Shervin doing her thing. Kroll going the other way. Maddie Kroll now with nine for USD. Yeah, Kroll, a freshman that they're going to expect big things out of. Probably not so much this year, of course, as a freshman, but certainly going forward. Are not afraid, still battling Sherman inside there. And again, here you can see how this is you can get bogged down without selling on the floor and Irwin creating there. And Tom, how about this year Tylee Irwin's had offensively? She went from last year towards the end of the year. I didn't feel like she wanted to attack or, or really do much of anything aggressive on the offensive end. And now this year, a different look in her eye. Oh boy for Shervin. That won't go down either. Tori Nelson tears it out of there and a foul on South Dakota. Yeah, I think they're gonna get Yugovsky with her four. Well, here's the thing too, you know, when these teams have tangled like this, they have played physical games like this very often as we're gonna get a timeout here. South Dakota State well, riding a high here, heading into the fourth quarter. Eight minutes to go. It takes you. Men's matchup coming up a little later on this evening. Pre-game right around 7.15, tip at 7.30. And then we're right back here tomorrow evening, 4.45 with the pre-game before the women go at it again. Volleyball coming up on Sunday on Midco Sports Network. South Coast State led by nine at the half, and then the third quarter got a little crazy. Whistle got a little weird. 12 fouls called on the Coyotes. South Coast State shot 16 free throws in that third quarter, extended the lead. And here we go with the final 750. Maya Sellen back on for the Jacks. Corey Nelson and <laughs> Lamb inside. They get a three-second call this time. That's what SDSU's tried to do in this game is look for post-ups a lot from other players, their wings. Against, they don't have to battle Shervin inside. That's on Nelson just too long in the lane. Matty Kroll. And another three that crawls over the top of the backboard this time. Two of 16 at the three-point line tonight for USD. Yeah, 12%. That's not what uh, the Coyotes wanted, certainly. But, you know, USD's had some struggles shooting the ball from three this year. They, they're about 33%, which is about middle of the pack in the Summit League. 
Nelson all the way around through the hands and up off the bottom of the backboard and uh, off of South Dakota State. Well, turnovers will be something certainly that Aaron Johnston looks at in this game. His team's got 15 of them now. And as you think about these teams playing again here in 24 hours, South Dakota's been able to force some turnovers. The thing is they haven't really been able to turn them into easy points a lot. Maya selling five boards now, seven assists, 15 points for the Jacks. Burkhard. Tough, tough shot. Yeah, she just can't get a good look against Sherman. Not that really anybody can. Sherman now with 10 and 14 rebounds for Hannah Sherman. Now she's got 10 points, but it's taken her 16 shots to get there. That's the key thing. Good Lance. Hands. Knocked it away. Corn Gable with Haley Greer chasing and Corn Gable up and in. 14 for Corn Gable with just three of those coming here in the second half so far. Uh, USD only 14 points off of these turnovers. And that's something they could have maybe capitalized a little bit more on. That time it really paid dividends for them. South Dakota State takes time out, and the Jacks have not scored on a handful of possessions now, about two and a half minutes. So You were saying before the last yeah. break about the... <laughs> Their physicality and how it might take a toll on tomorrow night's matchup. Yeah, I think you, you, know, you think about it. When these teams have played each other in a typical season, it's a physical battle. But they don't have to see each other again, usually for another month, maybe, right? Okay, well, now you go toe to toe tonight, and it's has been a, a physical battle. We've talked about it all night. There's been a ton of physicality in the post and other places as well. And now you got to turn around and play again in 24 hours and to me that's going to be a very interesting thing for us to watch tomorrow night here when these teams match up is you know what kind of level of energy can they have and it's not so much that, that mentally they won't be up for the game Tom of course they will but you know what what can your body physically give you uh, after you've had to play a, a very tough 40 minutes here tonight Selwyn just kind of lost the handle on it, but it comes right into the hands of Callie Tyson for her first bucket. I assume they'll give Selwyn her eighth assist there. And uh, Selwyn again doing a little bit of everything tonight, rebounding, assists, and scoring. 16 for Corn Gable. Corn Gable's up over 32 minutes now, Brad. Chloe Lamb's been out there for 35. Shervin and Kroll, some of the other starters, 30 plus minutes. Now there's been no wave in the white flag yet from Don Pulse of White. And that doesn't surprise me. That's certainly not in her personality at all. But I wouldn't be surprised to see those starters go to the bench soon here. Just because I don't think this game's going to be reachable for USD unless they really go on a run pretty quick here. Another block for Shervin. Shervin again in amongst of two or three white jerseys every time she has touched the basketball tonight. Yeah, the game plan was certainly drilled into this SDSU defense that they weren't going to let Hannah Shervin get going in the post. They were going to make her life very difficult, and they've done it. She shot 5 of 16 in this game. And Don Plitzoy now going to do just that, get her starters out, live to fight another day, so to speak. And focus the attention on seeing, can you get a split out of this, which certainly would still be fine, I think, if you're USD, knowing that you're playing two tough games here on the road against SDSU. Macy Giebert back, Claudia Kunzer back on, Morgan Hansen. And the Zurich for the Coyotes, Kunzer. Pulls that out of there, but the shot clock is going to expire. A great hustle. And SGC's been terrific defensively all night. They did a nice job there. They've held this USD team that came in 
averaging 77 points a game. They've got them sitting at 41 right now. I'm really surprised Aaron Johnson, though, isn't going to his bench right now. I mean, USD's clearly subbed all their players out, but AJ leaving his starters in, at least for this possession. Nelson. Tom South Dakota State's bench scored them 21 points in the first half. And that was really the thing that kind of separated and gave SDSU that halftime lead. And they haven't looked back since. They've only gotten two from them here in the second half. First bucket for Morgan Hansen. Yeah, Maya Sellen kind of got the Jacks going early in their first quarter. And then Matty Velostian came in, hit some threes. Stapleton came in, hit those three threes. Kylie Irwin's had her moments offensively. Yeah, but it's been the starters here in this second half. You look at SDSU here now. They've scored 29 second half points. Excuse me, make it 31 now. And again, 29 of them coming from the starting five. Selling with 17. Tyler Irwin with 12. Reagan Sankey is in as well here for USD. Johnson's got his subs now at the, at the table, but his starters have had to play two more possessions here because no stoppage. And you gotta think he might call timeout here, if nothing else, just to get them in the game. And he will do so. So Selling comes out with 17 points, nine assists on the night. Kylie Irwin shot it well. She's got a dozen. Mesa Byam, Velostian, Haley Greer. Stapleton come back in along with Reagan Nessheim. Here's Stapleton who came in in that first half at 11 points to help the Jackrabbits get that early lead. I'm going to tell you one thing why Aaron Johnson maybe left his starters in for a couple more minutes there, and that is we talked at the beginning of the game about the NCAA, the net ranking, okay? So coming into this game, South Dakota State 44th in the net ranking, South Dakota 25, and that, that, that perplexed me quite frankly when I look at the quality of wins that South Dakota State's had. They've got three wins, SDSU does, over teams ahead of them in that net ranking, but Margin of victory actually plays a little bit of a role in that because they do look at your offense and defensive efficiencies in your ranking. And so this win here, a 20-point win over USD is going to be huge to help SDSU move up in that category. And why is the net ranking important? That could determine an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. And as you look at the Summit League, quite frankly, just to be honest, SDSU's not going to have a lot of other opportunities outside of tomorrow night to really make a statement in their wins and net ranking and things like that. The rest of the Summit League teams are not in the top 100. And so a big win like this tonight's going to go a long way to helping that. It was the RPI until this year for the women, and the women went to the net rating like the men had a couple of years ago. And I don't recall if that was part of the equation before this year where that margin it of victory was, was no. important, but it seems like it shouldn't be an incentive, but it no. is. Yeah, unfortunately, and maybe, yeah, it's not what you're looking to do to maybe run up scores, but you're trying to help your efficiency numbers get better. Here's Nessheim. We'll get to the free throw line. Now, quite frankly, the reason why USD's at 25 is they've had some nice quite frankly, blow out wins over some teams that have helped their efficiency numbers. SDSU's had kind of some more grinded out games at times, quite frankly, that have hurt them. But I mean, you look at SDSU, I mean, they've got a win over Iowa State, over Gonzaga, over Missouri State. Those are three teams that are ahead of them right now in that net ranking. This is gonna be a win here tonight over a team ahead of them in that net ranking. So that's certainly gonna help them.
Tom. We've seen a lot in the Summit League here this season when you play these back-to-backs that game one really honestly doesn't off have a lot to do with game two. And I don't think game two is going to look anything like this tomorrow night. USD is going to be ready to go. It's going to be the battle that we kind of expected, I think, again, here tomorrow night when these teams play again. Yeah, going to be riveting tomorrow night. South Dakota will shoot the ball better. You know that. The Yotes are just 27% here tonight. Two of 20 at the three-point line yeah, for USD, and you won't see that again. No, no, and you're not going to see, you know, Lamb, Corn Gable in, in particular struggle the way they did here, uh, shooting from the perimeter. Corn Gable was good getting into the into the paint, and, and then Hannah Shervin had some struggles scoring inside too. Well, this will stop a 24-game win streak in the Summit League for South Dakota. Up and in for Alex Hempe, her first bucket of the night for the Yotes, but that is going to do it at 64-45. Jack Rabbits get to 7-0 in summer league play, 14-2 on the season for South Dakota State. South Dakota now 10-4. And six and one in summer league play. The prelude to round two tomorrow night between the Coyotes and the Jackrabbits. And we will chat a little bit with Aaron Johnston when we come back.